Hello and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Anastasia Cronin and I'm going to be your host for today. I am broadcasting live from National Geographic headquarters here in Washington, DC. And I'm so glad you're joining us today. Here in the United States, we're celebrating Women's History Month all March um, from the women who've made history in the past the women in your life today, and the young women watching today's show, we see you. We encourage our viewers to check out biographies of amazing women uh, throughout history, including our explorers, to learn about their legacy. So now at National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic explorers, for short lessons and time for your questions. Uh, this week, National Geographic is honoring World Water Day, which was actually just yesterday. And we are committed to better understanding and protecting our freshwater resources, like lakes and river rivers around the world. Uh, which is why I am so thrilled to have explorer Dr. Dalal Hanna joining us today from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, Dalal is a freshwater ecologist, uh, meaning she explores and researches bodies of water like rivers. Her work includes looking closely at the animals and the plants that live near the water to give her clues about whether the river is healthy or not. Uh, I like to think of her as a bit of a, a stream whisperer. Uh, Dalal also loves to share her work with young people like you uh, through her charity, Riparia. She works with a team to take young people out exploring by canoe and encourages them to investigate their local waterways. Uh, today, Dalal is here to share um, how bodies of water, like streams, have secrets to tell us if we have the eyes to see and the ears to listen. So before we get into day, to today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered viewer who join us from around the globe. We're gonna give a few special shout outs today. Um, big shout out to AG Cox Middle School. Thank you for joining us. To Sioux City Community School District, hello. Soda Creek Elementary School, Los Alamitos Elementary School, uh, Pulaski Heights Middle School, Walden School of Liberal Arts, and all the homeschools out there joining us as well. We are so thrilled to have you all here today. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. Uh, so it's time to turn things over to Dalal to share all about the secrets of streams. Take it away, Dalal. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you today. I'm gonna share my screen so I can show you a little bit more about what I do. Hold on a second here. There you have it. So um, thank you all so much for being here today. It's such a pleasure to join you. And today what I wanna do is bring you on a journey through one of my favorite habitat types. This picture is actually one of me working in this very special habitat type. Can anyone guess what this habitat type is? You can type answers into the chat or onto YouTube. So I see some different answers coming in. You could discuss among your peers. What, you, what habitat type do you think I'm in here? See some different answers coming in. All right, that's right. This is a picture of a stream. And I love streams. I love them for so many different reasons that I'm really excited to share with you today. But one of my favorite thing about streams is that even if they're little, they are mighty. So one of the ways that I like to think about streams is as little rivers. It's actually directly thanks to streams that we have big rivers like the one in this picture because streams flow into rivers and bring them the water that they need to exist. I'm so thankful for that because one of my all time favorite things to do is canoe down rivers, just like in this picture. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, this is what canoeing looks like. Now this is an especially good week of the year to be talking about streams and the water that flows through them because as our host mentioned, um, yesterday, March 22nd, was World Water Day, a really special day to celebrate water and all of the different wonders that it supports. So there are two main different types of water on Earth. Do any of you know what these are? I'll give you a second to think about it. You can talk to your peers in your class. You can shout out to your teacher. Two main types of water. You can type in answers into the chat. I see that the lovely lemons have come up with an answer, salt water and fresh water. And that's exactly it. 
Um, there is salt water, like the one, like the water that we find in oceans, and fresh water, in other words, water that isn't salty, like in streams. And fresh waters are really important, not only because they're absolutely beautiful landscapes, like the one you see in this picture, but they're also places that provide us with many, many resources that we need. Or in other words, they help make our lives better. So what I want to do now is get to get each of your classes to type in a few different ways that you think fresh waters help make our lives better, better by going to the link that is on this slide that I've also put um, into the chat and that will be put onto YouTube for those of you joining us there. So what you can do here, what I'm going to do is shift over there. And as soon as you start typing in answers, we're going to see them on this slide. So the question is, how do freshwaters help make our lives better? I see that participants are typing, and we should see some answers showing up soon. They hydrate us, right? So they provide us with drinking water, very important. If we didn't have fresh waters, we wouldn't have water to drink, which is clearly critical to our lives. Fish live in them, that's right. They're places that we can fish and many communities actually rely on fish for their sustenance. It's a very important food. It's also a very important recreational activity to go fishing. Uh, their habitat for other species. They are really important for showering. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, they're important for farming. That's also right. They help with hygiene. So yes, as we can see here, Water provides us with many different resources. They're a place that we can go to connect with landscapes. They're actually kind of these massive highways on which we use boats to transport goods. So water contribute, fresh waters contribute to our well-being in many different ways. I'm gonna pop back over here to uh, this presentation, but you're welcome to keep type typing in answers. And um, I'm gonna show you this map of the earth. So all the white parts that you see are oceans and the gray parts are land, and the blue that's overlaying the gray is where there is fresh water. And as you can see by all the blue on this map, fresh water actually covers many parts of Earth. Now, these types of maps aren't necessarily easy to read, so to help you better understand what you're looking at, I've put a big red heart over the part of the map that represents the middle of the United States, where a lot of classrooms that are with us today are joining from. If you're joining from elsewhere than the United States, maybe your teachers um, or your educators can help point out which part of the map you are on. And so if we follow this black arrow and go slightly northeast of this heart, we find ourselves right back at this freshwater river that I showed you a picture of earlier. And I wanna bring us back here because I think it's a great place to start the story of the work that I do with streams as a scientist and as a National Geographic Explorer, which is the story that I wanna share with you today. So in this picture, I'm with my friend paddling down a river so that we can get to this little stream. And we are visiting this stream to find out more about its health. I really care about the health of streams because they're the lifeline of freshwaters all around the world. Without them, we wouldn't have rivers and lakes. We wouldn't have enough water to drink. We wouldn't have habitat for fishes to grow up in. And so for my job, one of the things that I do is compare the health of streams that are taken care of in different ways so that, can, so that I can help figure out the best ways to care for streams. So now what I want to do ne next is show you some of the most important tools that my coworkers and I use to measure the health of streams. And the idea of focusing on tools today is because this month, Explorer Classroom is focused on the different tools that explorers use. So by the end of our time together today, you'll have a better idea of how you can discover more about a stream the next time that you visit one, which will hopefully be soon. So one of the most important tools that there is to find out more about streams are nets, like the one that I'm holding in this picture. And I actually also brought my net to my office today so I could show it to you. This is called a kick net. It's shaped in a very special way. As you can see, it's kind of long like this. And what you do with a net like this one is that you place it in the water at the, at the kind of bottom of the stream. Um, and then you pick up the rocks that are, that are at the bottom of the stream and you rub them so that everything that's on them, excuse me, just putting my net down, goes into your net. Um, and so you can take this net and then you can use it to pick up earth from the bottom of the stream and rub those rocks. And then you can flip that net into a tray and look through the earth. And if you look through that earth, you'll quickly discover that it really isn't just dirt or earth. There is tons of life in the earth at the bottom of streams. 
check out this video showing you some of the cool insects that live at the bottom of streams. So these little creatures are called macroinvertebrates. And the types of them that you find in a stream can give you a good indication of the health of that stream. So to get a really good look at insects like this, there's another tool that I use that's really important in my work, and it is called a microscope. This in particular is a dissection microscope, which is really perfect for looking at insects. And some microscopes like this one even have cameras on them that allow you to take really nice pictures like this one. I find this little insect so cute. Um, just like us, it has, you know, different parts of its body. It has two eyes. Can any of you spot those eyes? Are they back here? Nah, I see people shaking their heads. No, yeah, they're definitely up here. Eye number one, eye number two, it's got its legs, its abdomen. And these parts that we see here are actually really cool. Those are like external gills. So they're what allow the insects to breathe. And of course, when you look in streams, you're going to find all kinds of insects, but you're also going to find all kinds of other life. In our discussion earlier about how streams help make our lives better, some people mentioned fish. And when I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do was to try and catch fish in fresh waters like rivers and streams. So now that I've shown you one of the most important tools that we can use to find out more about streams and their health, I have a challenge for you and your classrooms. I want you to try and find one of the closest streams to your school or your house and go out and pay it a visit. When you get there, you can pick up a rock at the bottom of the stream, flip it, look at it, see what you can find. When you're done with it, put it back where you found it. And if you look at that rock, you'll, if you look under that rock, you'll likely discover that there are many insects living there. You could even bring a strainer like this one that you might find in your average kitchen with you to that stream and use it to kind of let dirt flow through the, the, the water and your strainer and find insects. And you'll see that there is lots of diversity there. I can almost guarantee that if you look hard enough, you will be surprised. There's actually so much life in streams and finding out more about that life is a very important step in taking better care of our streams and freshwaters. And that's why I'm inviting you to do that today. Um, of course, when you visit a stream, make sure not to go alone. You know, waters are very, very powerful, especially moving waters like streams. So this is something you would never want to do alone. But as long as you're with a friend or the rest of your class, it's easy to be safe in these spaces. So now what I want to do is hear more from you. I want to hear all your questions and I want to talk with you uh, before our time runs up today. I'm so excited to hear what you all think about this and any questions that you have. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so, uh, so thank you so much, uh, Dalal, um, and you know all the students and teachers watching. We um, hope you are able to join many more of our events. Our next event for ages nine to fourteen will be on Tuesday, March twenty eighth, uh, at twelve p.m. Eastern, with Explorer Carmen Chavez, and she is going to tell us all about how to spy on the wonderful world of wildlife in the Amazon rainforest. Uh, so go ahead, have your educators, your teachers register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash explorer classroom. Uh, you can request a chance to be featured on screen. Uh, fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. Find the Explorer Mindset and Action Guide and Teacher Edition linked on each and every uh, event registration page. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day, everyone. Stay curious and keep exploring. Thank you so much.